So, Bobby, I have a question for you about uh, about Philadelphia because I'm not that familiar with the city. For you, like, what are some some pluses being here, and also maybe some some minuses? What's some things that are lacking in the the scene here? Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, the pluses is you know, for me, I moved to Philadelphia in 1975. I was born in New York. I've lived in New York. Um, so the, the pluses have been being able to, to study and, and, and be around some really uh, marvelous people. That, I mean, I was around a lot of marvelous people in New York, too. But the uh, things that have kept me here have been, you know, the relationships with uh, some, some, some of the musicians. Being able to study with Dennis Sandoli was, at a certain point, I realized I, there was nobody better I could study with in New York, and that was great but there's a there's a tradition in Philadelphia which I, you know having moved here in 75 I re was lucky enough to sort of hit the uh, almost the, 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 the last wave of the great era of Philadelphia you know right now I, I don't even you know it's, it's it's really a different reality than it was when I got here but I mean in, in the time you know the stage we were on you know I, I played here with Johnny Coles I played here with Odin Pope Played here with a drum you may or may not know named Edgar Bateman. I played oh, yeah. play with a. I, play, I got to, I played gigs with Hank Mobley. The thing in you know what I was doing in New York, and my background before I moved here was was essentially, I was in college at University of Wisconsin, and Cecil Taylor came out there. After I met Cecil, you know my whole world became nothing but the music of Cecil. I went followed him to three different cities, played with him in big bands for for a couple of years of doing nothing but. but then when I moved here, it put me in a situation where there, there weren't people, aside from Sunrise people, there weren't people who could really play modern music at, at that level. And I said, I want to play with great musicians. So I started saying, well, let me uh, get this, uh, this other thing together. Because what I was doing playing with Cecil was really, was a, a, really a different area of music. So being here, there was such a, a generosity of spirit from the older guys. There was, there was a, a generosity of spirit and an openness where you could play. I could play with someone like Odin Pope who could play, you know, the most, you know, as, as avant-garde as anybody in the world when he wanted to play the way. He could also play on an R&B gig at, you know, Philadelphia's version of the Apollo Theater. And I played Latin gigs with Odin. You know, I played rock gigs, you know. And so there was this... And, and there, maybe, maybe there still is, but, but what kept me here was this com, you know, a community. In, Philly, in New York, the, the scene is so, so fragmented, you know, and so uh, sort of, you know, different schools of, 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 you know, seeming schools. I mean, to me, music is an idea. It's not, it's not a style, you know, as soon as you put music in. Especially, I mean, what, what are you doing? What are you, yeah. what are you doing? Give it a name? You know, right. It's ridiculous. But, but that idea, I felt, was much, maybe, it's, maybe it's changed a lot in New York you now, the new younger generation of people who have grown up with such a variety of music. But in the 70s and 80s, when I sort of made the choice and became a Philadelphian, the community, you know, it's, it's sort of corny, but it, there was really a, a warmth and, and, and a, so many ways for me to learn music here that, that actually as great a you know, hub of music as New York is, there was more opportunity f for, for me here, you know. And then certain, you know, I got certain fortune here. I, you know, was able to buy, buy a home. I was able to just through dumb luck stumble into the situation where I run music programs in the prisons, which created a, a stability and a really... Uh, very good situation and a lot of very enjoyable and very positive thing, which, you know, it's just something that, that, that kept me here, you know. So uh, about seven or eight years ago, I stumbled into another situation where I created this big band of young guys. All the other times I had done large projects that had been big grants, and I got, you know, ten guys together, we played one concert, it was over. But I was able to create this situation with a steady band come to my house every Monday, willing to you know learn my music, and w what more can you ask than that? To have 13 young guys in your, come to yeah. your house and don't have to pay them to <laughs> play your music, you know, yeah. and and it's and and uh, it's so just that 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 and to have a house where you can fit 13 guys in the living room, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. to be, you, you know, so I'm, I've been 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 very fortunate here, and you know, you could talk about the the bad things all day, but I'd I'd rather say why you know what I like. Bobby Zangle, alto saxophone. Bookmark this page and tune in often as new clips will be added regularly.